Hi, in this video I wanted to show you how to create mocks using traffic parrot of RESTful APIs using the record and playback functionality. Okay, so what we're going to have this uh, is this finance application here that we're going to be testing, which is connecting to a third party API to fetch market data. Uh, we're going to put traffic parrot between that finance application and the market data API and hence record the traffic. So the request from the finance application will be passing through traffic parrot and being recorded. And same with the responses. Then we're going to put traffic parrot in the replay mode. So we're able to test the finance application in isolation and we don't have to rely on the third party API. And then what I'm, what I'm going to show you is how to change those recording and hence change the response that gets returned to the application from traffic parrot and the response that gets uh, rendered to the user. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at this finance application and how it looks like. So I've got the finance application here. I'm just going to start it up. There it is. It's up and running. Localhost 8082. So it's a very simple application. All it does is goes to the third party API, fetches Apple stock quote and extracts a bit of information from the JSON response as the last price field and presents it here to the user. OK, so let's do um, the traffic parrot bit. So we're going to put traffic parrot between the finance application and the market API right now. So first of all, we're going to start traffic parrot and then point it at the market data API. So I've got traffic parrot downloaded here um, and extracted. Um, what I'm going to do is just double click the start script and that's going to take around 20 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds to start up and well, it's actually much faster so what we're gonna do is um, use the tray icon to open it up and go straight to recording okay so uh, now what we're gonna do is point traffic parrot at that api so um, to get that url i'm gonna open up the finance application properties and you can see here we've got that real API URL, devmarketondemand.com. Place it here, start recording. And we've got a recorder running on localhost 8081 and it's proxying the traffic to devmarketondemand.com. Okay. So what we've got right now is um, this side sorted. Now we need to point the finance application at traffic parrot. So we can see that the record is running on localhost 8081. So let's point the finance application instead of at the real API. Let's point it at localhost 8081 and we're doing that using the properties file. Um, so I'll have to restart the finance application as well. So I'll close it and start it up again. And that's because this is a very simple demo application and um, your application might actually be reloading the configuration at runtime. So I'm going to refresh the finance application right now. And no change here, but what's actually happened was the finance application sent a request to Traffic Parrot, which forwarded the request to the real API, and we got the response back the same way as well. So um, we should see something in Traffic Parrot. And there we go. We've actually got something here. So we've got this request to response mapping. And uh, what it says is that traffic parts recorded uh, a request, uh, notice a request to this URL. It was a HTTP GET request. And it's also um, noticed a response. It was a HTTP 200 response with these headers and this uh, response body, which is a JSON body. And you can see the last price here, uh, the one that gets presented to the user, OK? So what I can do now is stop the recording and traffic part is automatically in playback mode. And this way we're going to be testing our finance application in isolation. We are not, we are not connecting anymore to the third party API. So I'm going to go and refresh the page here, the finance application. You can see it's coming back quite quickly. And that's because it's just going, uh, sending a request to traffic part, which is running all locally. It doesn't go over the internet uh, to the third party API. So what we can do now is um, change the recordings and hence change what gets uh, presented to the user. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to Traffic Parrot. 
edit this mapping and let's say I'm going to say it's 143.18 instead of 200. Yeah. Go to the finance application, refresh that, and there we go. So this is coming back from Traffic Pilot right now. So this allows you to do a lot of um, powerful things. Uh, one of them is sim sim simulate hypothetical situations. So let's say I know something is supposed to happen when the price drops below 10. I'm going to save this. Refresh the page on the finance application. And there you go. What we can see, the text used to be green and now it's red and we got these three exclamation marks here. So if you wanted to test this functionality with that real third party API, it might be hard, but with traffic parrot, it's quite easy. You just change the response and there you go. Um, we can change some, uh, we can change it a bit more. We can test, for example, what happens if you've got a very large price being returned. Okay, so I've put a, a large number for the price. Refresh the page here is and what we get is this exponential notation, E something. So software developers and testers, um, we're gonna know what is going on here. This is a notation using computer systems to um, represent large numbers. But as a user, I, I wanna see the actual price. It's a monetary an amount, so I wanna see the exact price. So what we've done is found a bug here in the system. And yeah, it was easy to simulate the situation, this hypothetical situation using traffic power. We can um, simulate one more situation. Let's say the price, there's something wrong with that API. And it's just returning a price as the word 10 instead of a number. Refresh the page on the finance application. And all we can see here is please wait. Well, this is not great user experience. What we should probably say instead is um, there's been a problem with our third party data provider. Please come back later. We're looking into the issue. But what we see right now is regardless of how many times I refresh the page is just please wait. This is not great user experience. OK, so let's go again through what we have demonstrated here. So we started off with a finance application that was connecting to a third party API. We've put traffic parallel between that application and that, uh, that API to record the traffic. Then we've put it into playback mode to playback the traffic. And then we've shown how we can change those uh, recordings and hence change the response that gets the return to the user. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. If you have anything else you would like to see, please comment down below. And see you next time. Thanks, bye-bye.